Oregon has a relatively unique system currently because it's dominated by um, a partnership between the environmental community, the Democrats, and the uh, public employee labor unions. Uh, their funding is automatic by payroll deduction because these are public employees. So in every election cycle they have, in every two-year election cycle, they have up to $74 million that's collected automatically from payroll deductions. None of which goes to union pension funds or health care benefits, all of which is available for outreach, for education, and for uh, potentially for political action. So when you look at the huge resource that's available to uh, uh, the pro progressives uh, in Oregon, it's very difficult for us to get the message out in, in the same frequency uh, and consistency as our opponents. And I would say that uh, uh, with that kind of money available, what you need to do, or what we see our opponents doing, is, is doing focus groups and message testing and making sure that ballot titles get written by the legislature. And those three key elements add up to very, very powerful messages going out that test well, that sell well, that sound bite well, and add the $74 million uh, potentially, uh, there's enough frequency of the message to be repeated. The people who don't have time to study further than the sound bite are, are the target of those outreach efforts, and they are effective. So, you know, even though people are uh, in Oregon becoming less and less susceptible to those kinds of messages and angrier by the day uh, in terms of what they see uh, the government doing, uh, dominated by the Democrats, that's borrow more, spend more, and grow government. Uh, at the end of the day, that anger is going to be focused uh, on the incumbents and uh, mostly we hope on the Democrat leadership and Oregon again is unique because we don't have a single Republican in statewide office. We have one in the congressional delegation and that's it. As a matter of fact, I'm probably uh, the top Republican elected official in Oregon at the state level. The only person above me is Congressman Greg Walden. He's at the federal level. So as far as uh, the, the other issue, which is uh, do we see that anger, that rising anger, benefiting Republicans in the coming election cycle? Of course we do. Uh, but I think we do ourselves an injustice if we assume that the only choice is that uh, independents and, uh, and conservative Democrats will have is to vote for the Republican. I think that's naive and I think that's complacency. Uh, there's not a number of districts and a number of candidacies where independents potentially could run to the right of the Republican. And there's a strong sentiment in Oregon that you turn all of the incumbents out, regardless of party affiliation, and start over. So I think the challenge for us is to make sure that we are, are listening carefully to uh, not just to the anger, because that's undifferentiated, but we're listening carefully to the articulated messages of people who want change in Oregon government and that we're able to answer their need. Uh, if we answer the need better than uh, independents or others that might be running for the office, then Republicans have a chance. If we aren't listening and we don't care enough to make sure that uh, our core values are reflective of the things that people in Oregon think are important, we won't be elected. Uh, I'm confident that the kind of candidates that the Republicans are fielding in this cycle re do truly reflect the mood and the need of their community, and I think they're more electable than they've ever been because they're better attuned than they've ever been. So this is a great opportunity for uh, Oregon Republicans. We're not going to squander it. We see it. We feel it. We know the energy's growing. And so our challenge is to uh, field the candidates that really will uh, represent the, the new directions in state government that Oregonians want. So.